So welcome back to another episode, and today I'm going to cover a few subjects. First of all, I'm going to talk all about Terry Bogard and why it's a huge deal he's in Smash Brothers, and I'm also going to show an extended reaction uh, to the Nintendo Direct the other day. I put a smaller reaction in and everybody was mad at me saying they wanted to see my full reaction. I have that as well. I'm also going to talk about the Nintendo online service for the Nintendo Switch for the Super Nintendo. I was playing it all last night. It's quite a lot of fun. There's some interesting features in there and a few things that I've been praying for for a long time. They're there. I'm also going to mention Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3 may potentially come over here. There's been some brand new news on the subject. It's exciting and disappointing at the same time, so we'll get to that. First of all, let's start off with why I'm dressed like this. And I've had this cosplay for around six years, and I, I have always been super proud of this cosplay. I, I don't do cosplay, but I do do Terry Bogard. <laughs> and I absolutely love this character, and I couldn't be happier that he's in Smash Brothers. Now, people are saying, who is Terry Bogard? Who is he? It's kind of funny, there was that direct, and it went out to so many people, and so many people were excited, like me, and like a lot of you out there, but there was a, quite a few people that said, who is Terry Bogard? They had no idea who this character was. They're like, who is this guy? For all of you out there who do not know, Terry Bogard was in Fatal Fury, the very first one right here on the Neo Geo, released in the arcades. It's a fighting game, and he's the, one of the main characters in this fighting game. He looks exactly like this. He's kind of like a trucker. He kind of represents America in a lot of ways, kind of, in some ways. And then he's been in, you know, obviously the sequel, uh, you know, Fatal Fury, uh, Special, and then into the King of Fighters series and into the Mark of Wolves. He's had quite the legacy, and obviously he's still in the new King of Fighters games, but he's a very unknown character to the masses. He's not known like, you know, Mario is or Link uh, and all these kinds of characters. He is not known like that. He's a very underground character. He always has been in the arcades and that's what makes him so super cool. And that's why his announcement was such a big deal to me. And I kind of thought it was going to happen, but I wasn't sure. And I'm going to show my extended reaction to the trailer. This is me just sitting here and I had my Fatal Fury hat right here, ready to go, just in case, but I wasn't sure. So here's my full reaction. Hmm? Okay, what is happening? What is happening? What? Okay. <laughs> The Neo Geo. Oh my god. Bracing myself for this one. The King of Fighters 94. The King of Fighters 94. That's what this is. Oh my god. Art of Fighting. Fatal Fury. Geese Howard. Samurai Showdown? What is going on today? Oh my god. I think they've got an entire Neo Geo pack. This was going to be. The invitation. Oh my god. Oh my god. We're taking off this hat. We're putting on this one. I had it ready, just in case. Super Smash Brothers Fatal Fury. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. In November. 
Oh my god. As you can see, I was quite excited. And I was excited for it on a lot of different levels. One, because he's in Smash, I get to play as him. Versus all these other characters. It's Smash is ridiculous now. It is over the top. I mean, I've never seen it. I will never see it again. One fighting game that has all of these characters in it. It's unbelievable. Why I'm excited about it is because it brings the name Terry Bogard to the masses. And that's the thing. Once Dragon Quest characters get into a Smash Brothers game, people who don't play Dragon Quest games are gonna say, hey, who are all these characters? I'm gonna go play those games. It's gonna create some excitement, some curiosity. Uh, people saying, who is this character? I've gotta look into these other games. I've gotta look into the history of SNK and the Neo Geo. And we might get a few more fans there. And that's only a great thing. So that's my take on Terry. And I also wanna say this. <laughs> We're working on it behind the scenes. We're getting another vest made for Kim for a female Terry Bogard. So look for that sometime in the future. I don't know what episode that will come into, but it should be a lot of fun. Now, the other thing that was at the Nintendo Direct was the unveiling of Super Nintendo games on the Nintendo Switch. We all went, finally, this is finally coming out. We've wanted this since day one. You know, they showed the NES games and we're like, yeah, that's cool, but where's the Super Nintendo games? And it's funny, now we've got the Super Nintendo games, now we're saying, hey, where's the N64 games? Where's the GameCube games? We're never satisfied, it's ridiculous. But I am satisfied that the Super Nintendo games are on here, and I gotta say, I was playing it all last night, and I'm just gonna go through a few games that I was playing, some recommendations, some recommendations, I guess I'll call them. I was very happy with the list. I went through the list and I'm like, look at all these games on here. Just, you know, initially, and we all know there's going to be the, the some Nintendo Direct in the future. They're going to say, Earthbound is available right now. And everybody's going to go, oh my God, I bought Earthbound for the 50,000th time. And I'm excited once again. We know that's going to happen. That will happen. So uh, some recommendations on the Super Nintendo uh, online uh, service on the Switch. I will say, I was playing this last night. You know, for a lot of people who watch the show, one of my personal favorite games, Super Ghouls and Ghosts by Capcom. This is an incredible game, and I was playing it all through the night last night, and getting to levels that I haven't gone to in a long time, I gotta say, I'm really good at the game. I was playing it when I was 19 years old. I'll never forget playing it in my parents' basement in the summertime. I'm playing the crap out of that thing and memorizing how to get through the levels. And you know what's crazy about the game is the graphics looked great back then, but they still hold up extremely well. And you know, obviously I haven't played in quite a few years uh, to get to the further levels. And why I was able to last night was some dumb things that I would do to get killed. I was like, oh no, the rewind function on the Super Nintendo on the Switch is great. So I just pause it and I can go back to the stupid mistake I made and get past that mistake. I got all the way to the end of the game and for anybody who's played the game, you get all the way to the end and then you have to do it again. You have to go through the whole game again. Imagine doing that without a rewind function. Welcome to the old days. That's what we dealt with back then. And so that was a lot of fun. I, I gotta say playing as Arthur and, and seeing those graphics and seeing the level design and the difficulty is so perfect. I, it really is. It's challenging, but the more and more you play it, the more you say, oh yeah, okay, if I do this the next time, I can get past this. It's very good that way. It's not cheap. It, it's cheap if you think it is, but if you memorize the level, it ain't cheap. You can get through it almost in one go. I use the rewind function, but quite a few levels I could get through all the way to the end. So high recommendation for that. Another big recommendation, and look at this. I could say, yes, play Super Mario World. You know, play Yoshi's Island. Play all those style of games. Play the Kirby games. Those are great games, along with Super Metroid and Mario Kart. But I just wanted to kind of recommend some games that are off the beaten path that maybe a lot of people haven't played. Uh, the next game I'm going to recommend is another Capcom game, Demon's Crest. And I have my copy in the back here, in the shelf, and I've had so many offers from people to buy my copy of the game, and it's not the greatest copy, but it's super expensive, so it's kind of a deal to get it on the Nintendo Switch this way for, like, what, what, five bucks a month for the online service? Not bad. This game is very underappreciated. 
and a lot of people start to play it and they get very frustrated and quit. I've seen it happen a lot of times, but with a little bit of perseverance, it's an excellent game. It's a, a side view action RPG where you play the demon from the Ghouls and Ghosts series. It's perfect. It's kind of f fitting going into this next game. It's an action platforming game where you're just fighting demons throughout this chaotic world. It is awesome. The graphics are phenomenal. Some of the best on the Super Nintendo. And you're jumping from ledges to ledges. You can hover, you can spit fire, you can get power-ups. There's a lot to all of this. So give it a go and don't give up. Don't give up. You'll get to the first, the beginning of the game will make you want to give up. You're like, why am I fighting this huge dragon and I'm, I don't know what to do. There's no tutorial. Welcome to the old days once again. They throw you into the fire and you have to figure it out. And that's what makes it so awesome. Once you get past that, all of a sudden you're like, oh wait, I can go all over the place. It's kind of a semi-Metroidvania, in a, if I'm going to use that term very loosely, but a lot of fun that game. Another game that I will mention is, oh my god, I can't believe this, it's another Capcom game. And it's an RPG that's on here, and one that, I don't know, I think it's worth revisiting. Yes, the combat is a little old school. Hell, yes, the game is a little old school. But there's some beauty in it. There's some beauty in it in that it's Capcom's really one of their first RPG ventures. And I thought they kind of did pretty good back in the day. I remember me and my friend Andrew playing this game and we really liked it a lot. Of, you know, Capcom's graphics on the Super Nintendo were unbelievable. I was just talking about Super Ghouls and Ghosts and then into Demon's Crest and, you know, and then we got Breath of Fire in the mix as well. Uh, the character portraits, the, the characters themselves, the overworld, the music. It's a classic. It is a classic and definitely a game that's worth revisiting. And one feature on here that makes me so happy, I should have mentioned it right in the beginning here, but I saved the best for last. Remember that video I made saying the thing that I hate on the Nintendo Switch about the border around? You know how it shows all the options and things while you're playing a game, uh, an NES game? I hated it, it drove me crazy. And then yesterday was so funny. I was looking at my Twitter and people were tweeting at me going, Johnny, if you go into the settings, you can remove the border and all those stupid options and things around it. I'm like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So that's the first thing I went and did. And I turned off, you know, the options and start, select, all that crap. I got that off the screen. Still your profile pic is in the top left and you still have the kind of uh, ugly border on the left and right side. But let me say it's an improvement. It's an improvement. And I want to say also, I was playing the Super Nintendo games on the Pro Controller last night. And it's really strange. I'm playing the games and all of a sudden I'm like, man, these games control really good. The Pro Controller is really good for these Super Nintendo games. Really, especially for me playing Super Ghouls and Ghosts. So, a uh, high recommendation for the Pro Controller on the TV screen. Works great. Now, for the last bit of news, it seems that Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3 are coming out on the Nintendo Switch. This got revealed on the Square Enix Asia Facebook page that these games are coming out sometime in the future and that they will be in Chinese, Korean, and here's the thing, it says English on there. So that's cool. So you will be able to download them. Well, wait, it seems that you need a Japanese Nintendo Switch account in there. So. If you want to go in and make one of those and make that happen, in the future you may be able to download these with English in there. I don't know what the English is like. I haven't seen it myself. This is just going off that Facebook page. And I got to say something here. I am really thrilled to hear this because here we go. We have Dragon Quest 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, not 10, uh, and 11 over here. We have them in a lot of different ways uh, on the 3DS. Uh, and, and, and on obviously so many other systems with 11 great stuff, but we've never gotten one, two, and three. We need one, two, and three because my wife has never finished those games. She's finished every other Dragon Quest game, every other Dragon Quest game, but not one, two, and three because it's not being accessible over here. So for it to be on the Nintendo Switch or on the PS4, I don't care what system, as long as we can play it over here uh, and official translations, that would be phenomenal. So. 
What do you guys think of all of this stuff? We have Terry Bogard. What do you think about that? What do you think about the Super Nintendo on the Nintendo Switch? You must be happy. I know I'm happy. Yeah, I guess you want more games. We all want more games for sure. And Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3 potentially in the future. Some exciting news. So anyways, guys, until next time.